So I'm here today to talk about a very important initiative with the Sahaba Institute. Because one of the things that we're trying to deal with in America as Muslims is to take control of our own story and take control of our own narrative. And one of the beautiful things that the Sahaba Initiative is doing, which is true to the prophetic tradition of our religion, is feeding people and providing services. And I myself actually just came to find out that you know, Bernardino is, is the second poorest city in the United States, which even, even for myself, as somebody born in America, uh, this is a staggering statistic, not only because you know, it's a city of that size, but I think it's a, a, a misnomer that anybody in California would be in the second poorest city in the United States. So it really shows that we, we, we need to dispel not only our own myths and our own misconceptions, but we need to dispel, dispel our own ignorance uh, about the, the, the environments in which we live in. So I'm here to try to you know, encourage people, um, particularly that are coming from the immigrant Muslim experience, to inject yourself into the story and the narrative of Islam in America. And that, in my opinion, if we get down to the brass tacks of feeding people, clothing people, essentially so solving society problems, we can shut down the printing press of printing pamphlets about Islam. We will never need to print another pamphlet again if we become the solvers of societal problems. And while this may sound monumental initially, um, we should not be afraid to dream a little big when it comes to our engaging of our religion, of Islam, of the tradition of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam and our environment around us. And that probably for the vast majority of Muslims that will live within this locale will not realize that they could take a 10 minute drive up the street to Fontana or you know, San Bernardino or wherever and suddenly realize that, wow, there are people who are living in squalor, you know, conditions that we might almost equate with the third world and yet they may only be 10, 20 or 30 minute drive from our backyard. So. The Sahaba Institute is offering a number of great services. They have a resource clinic to help people tap into uh, resources that are avail to, available to them just as United States citizens. Uh, they have a food bank that are feeding people. They have a community garden. And again, I think one of the clouds that is hanging over the Muslim community in America is this idea is that Islam is not from America and that it does not belong in America. And we can release all of, you know, we can release all of the YouTube videos, we can release all of the articles, all the blog statements, all the pamphlets about how and what Islam is. But until that manifests in a reality that people see that our actions equate our faith, then we will have a very hard time particularly in a post 9-11 context of dispelling this. So I offer this as nasiha, as some sound advice, particularly to the Muslim, the immigrant Muslim community. Take charge of your own narrative and put your money where your mouth is by, 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 by putting your, 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 your risk, your money into resources to helping and to feeding people. And if we do this, even if we, at first, we, we, we try and don't succeed, or even if initially, you know, we, we don't solve all problems with a magic wand. I think that, you know, one thing that Americans do know is sincerity. And if they see us acting, even if we don't solve everybody's problems with a magic wand, I think that they will see the sincerity of our actions. And we won't have to worry about running PR campaigns on Fox News, that the proof will be in the pudding. And in fact, you know, the, the task of, of feeding people, just as an example, since they have a food bank, 
is that even our aqidah, our theology, our faith in Islam is predicated and hung in the balance of whether or not we feed people, as Allah says, and Surah Al-Haqa, He says, you know, إِنَّهُ كَانَ لَا يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ الْعَظِيمِ وَلَا يُحَدُّ عَلَى تَعَامِ الْمِسْكِينِ And that Allah in this verse in the Qur'an is chastising a group of people not only for not believing in God Almighty, but not only did they not believe, but they did not feed poor people. And then they are described that upon that day that they will have, you know, that he will not have una, you know, ha una hamim, that they, they won't have any friend or helper on the day of judgment for people that not only didn't believe in Allah properly, but did not feed poor people. This is intimately tied into our salvation on the day of judgment as believers and in further proof from a hadith from the Prophet ﷺ in which he said لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لجره ما يحب لنفسي that none of you will attain faith until you want for your neighbor what you want for yourselves and if you're within a 20, 30, 40 minute drive from people that are living in near third world squalor conditions then these people do qualify as your neighbors and they qualify for your assistance. Not do they only qualify the assistance of the United States government, these people qualify for the assistance of the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. So I, I hope that uh, we can move forward and you'll be uh, moved to be a part of this initiative and that ultimately we will gain the favor of our Lord. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.